I've been talking since the GameStop fiasco, right? Since the R Wall Street bets where internet chat decides to go crazy on a stock that doesn't make sense. And people were, you know, losing all sorts of savings that were shorting something that made sense to them. Right. I've been talking about this idea that in a interconnected world where information is completely free and money travels, we have not mul- we have not factored in the risk of mob mentality when everything moves so quickly. Hmm. And these are the numbers that freak me out. In 2008, the last bank run, $17 billion got taken from Washington Mutual in 10 days. On Thursday, $42 billion got moved from Silicon Valley Bank in one day. Wow. This, to me, is the GameStop fiasco of bank runs, right? It's same things, right? Like, we joked about it being a bunch of nerds in their mom's basement playing video games that all of a sudden, like, lit a fire that turned into, like, a giant wildfire, Really, what we were saying is like in one concentrated corner of the internet, something can happen that spreads and it affects the entire market, Mm -hmm. right? So in this case, it was, I'm not putting blame on Peter Thiel, but like that seems to be kind of like the big spark that, you know, a tweet from a highly regarded person started this thing that, yes, it is contained at Silicon Valley Bank. It's contained right now in... In inside this tool that they created, but it like strikes right at the heart of the confidence in banking, right? Like Rich Ritchie just let us know that, you know, he made President's Club this year at his bank and they decided to cancel the President's Club trip because you now can't take this like trip to your top performers during this time of like bad optics in the banking system, right? So there's still tremors that are happening around this, even though the epicenter was Silicon Valley and, and you know, like largely done. There's still tremors happening around the, the ecosystem. There's still things, people are on tilt, right? right? We're going to call it a, a poker term, right? Something else that might hit you a little bit sideways in the banking system might trigger another like aftershock. Mm-hmm. And to me, it's kind of what we've been hinting at, right? Like we pray so much, we put such a premium on liquidity when it comes to investments. And in this world where money travels so quick and information travels faster, the idea of liquidity represents a new risk that we haven't really figured out yet because yeah. these black swan events keep happening from these externalities that we could have never seen coming. I think you're onto something for sure. I mean, you've been talking about that ever since we were talking about GameStop. And I think certain elements of that ring true here. It's a little bit different, but I think what it is, if I can add one more thing onto your point there is when information and assets and decisions are highly centralized, that creates a lot more risk. And, you know, you start to think about what, you know, what made crypt like this crypto craze that we had a few years ago, what did people love about crypto? It was that it was decentralized, you know, and somehow that factored into their investment decisions and all this good stuff. Like this idea that like something centralized when some people who a relatively small number of people make the decisions that affect an entire marketplace and you, and that marketplace is clearly defined and very liquid, big swings can happen. Swings today can happen that were just not really feasible in 2008 versus when Washington Mutual, you know, had that run. That's an incredible stat. I didn't know that until you shared that, Ben. It's incredible. So like this idea that, you know, what was Silicon Valley Bank catering to? A highly centralized part of the economy, a part of the, you know, it was the tech sector, you know, the people that are in the know in that tech sector started putting out feelers and starting letting people know in their networks that, listen, you should pull your money out. It's like this, when there's a small number of decision makers, there's more inherent risk as well. And it turns assets that we never thought were risky, like putting your money in a bank into something that has a whole different risk profile now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think the most concerning thing is the idea that it's still all connected, right? Like it just when it used to be that a small town bank could make a big mistake or I don't know, man, I'm just saying this, but like, I assume that in 1995, a small town bank could make a big mistake like this, get screwed, go under. Some people get screwed. It gets contained, right? Like it's not this like contagion effect that spreads to other things, right? Like, like I think that's the... Um, that's the big thing that that just like really, really freaks me out, to be perfectly honest. I'm with you. And it's not yeah. just to, you know, to that sector now, yeah. every part of the economy is affected, you yeah. know. And, and Matt's saying that the, you know, he's saying that he's not concerned about 
bank. Signature is a much scarier case. I don't even know what that is. Right? Signature is the the third largest bank collapse. So oh, okay. Silicon Valley Bank was the second largest behind Washington Mutual. Okay. Signature Bank was the second bank to collapse over the weekend. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, and that's really why people are concerned. I think people, and I've read a number of reports on it, the the example, and like Matt was talking about, the example of what happened at Signature, excuse me, at Silicon Valley Bank seems to be a kind of like a gross mismanagement of the, that bank. You know, just looking at how their deposits come in, you know, and the fact of where they got their money and then understanding that in a high interest rate environment, they wouldn't be able to capitalize if there was a big bank. Mm -hmm. That seems like something that was just gross mismanagement made more difficult by the economy that we're in right now and the interest rate environment. But I think the greater risk is how does that affect every other part of this economy, yeah. right? So Signature, I don't know as deeply, I haven't looked into their information as well, but I also know they had a similar profile as Silicon Valley Bank, knowing that they got a lot of their money, not from like depositors like you and me putting money in the bank, mm -hmm. but from other sources, institutions, VCs. And so they lost a lot of their funding there. And it makes them susceptible to when people say, I want to pull all of my money out of the bank. Yep. And so those seem like outliers here. But what it does is it creates in an interconnected world, an interconnected environment. Now, you know, everybody is on edge until the government and the Fed and the FDIC stepped in and said, we're going to insure the uninsured deposits. Every business owner and every person who had more than $250,000 in a bank was thinking over this weekend, I'm going to go to the bank and pull my money out because yeah. I don't know what my bank is doing. Yeah. And so that's how everybody is affected. And that's why the government stepped in to, to solve this issue. And I mean, you look at stocks beyond that. I mean, the government stepped in to solve deposits, but it's not like yeah. there hasn't been a huge, you know, loss of wealth, loss of wealth. <laughs> Well, thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. regional banks are getting pummeled yeah. and banks in general are getting pummeled, having to answer a lot of questions now and the overall market is down.